So this is the ultimate trot line bucket and it's solved a lot of problems for me. I put a lot of time into it and I put a lot of thought into it and um, it allows me to fish this trot line uh, without any aggravation and it's a smooth efficient process. Let me show you the features of this bucket. The first feature that I want to point out on this bucket is this handle that I made. I took the metal handle off and put this rope handle on right here, which is a much better handle. And I did that without drilling through the bucket and without tying a knot. There's no knot in there. Uh, let me show you how I did that. So I drilled a hole through this polyethylene and I pushed the rope through. Now, I don't want to tie a knot because it's bulky, so what I did is I took a knife and I cut it and melted the end right there to be like a mushroom shape. I put a stainless steel washer on it, okay, and then it slips under here and pulls out. Now, when you drill, when you drill into polyethylene, it always makes burrs, which will pick apart the rope. So I put this uh, rubber grommet right there to solve that problem. So, it's a nice handle. The second thing that I want to show you are these slots right here. This is a 25 hook trot line, and in order to keep the hooks from tangling, I made these slots. And if you look, you can see that the slots are all equidistant. So, I had to go back to uh, 10th grade and look up some formulas for uh, perimeter of a perimeter of a circle and it, it took some math to make these all perfect like this, but I cut these on a saw and it allows each individual hook to have its own place. Now the rim on the outside of this bucket is, um, <clears throat> has, own, um, it has its own compartments here. Okay? Now they didn't mean to do that, it's just, makes the, it's just bracing to make the bucket stronger, but each hook, each hook slides into its own compartment, every single one and that keeps the hooks organized, okay? Now, there's still another problem with hooks coming out and tangling on other things. So that's why I came up with this keeper right here. So this is a nylon strap with a buckle, okay? And I tighten it up like that and it keeps the hooks secure so that if the bucket tips over in the boat, all the hooks are exactly where they need to be. I can walk uh, by it and, and my clothes can brush against it and it's not gonna get hooked on anything. Up next, as you've seen, I always carry knives with me, kind of like dive knives, two of them. And, and I don't use them uh, except for emergencies, okay? Um, what I do is when I get in the boat, I take this nylon strap off and I put it around my waist. So that if I fall out of the boat and if I get wrapped up in the line or I get hooked by a hook or I get start to get dragged out of the boat, if that happens, I can reach into this holster, which is on my waist, pull it out and cut myself free. Now, if I'm getting dragged out of the boat, I could drop the knife and I'm getting dragged and I, I can't reach the knife. Imagine that. If that happens, well, I've got another knife available, you know, just in case. I never use these for anything except the emergencies. I've never had to use it. Uh, hopefully I don't. Let's take a look inside the bucket here. Okay, first thing I wanna show you is the end of the line. And, and this is a problem that, that everyone has. When you open up your trot line bucket or whatever you're using, it's hard to find the end of the line. And you don't want to dig through all this and tangle it up. So I put this cork right here and that allows me to immediately find the end of the line. It also allows me to retrieve this. If I'm in the boat and I go to hook it up and I accidentally drop this into the water, it would be hard to pick it up out of the water again because this would sink. This clasp by here would sink and you would lose the end of the trot line. I don't have time for that. So I put this cork float right here and if I drop it into the water, it's going to float and I can just reach down and pick it up. So this serves two purposes. It identifies where the end of the line is and it makes it easy to retrieve. Okay. 
Now, <clears throat> look how much line there is between the end and the first hook. I'll show you that. There's about 30 feet of line in between the end of the trot line and the first hook. And the reason for that is because I want there to be plenty of time between securing the trot line and the arrival of the first hook. And you'll see that when I put the line out. Let's look at the components of the line. I have a 150 pound test main line with what's called a monk's robe knot right there. And there is a monk's robe knot. And a swivel. Now the swivel is not tied to the line. It just, the line is just threaded through this stainless steel swivel, which is about 35 years old. Now, the reason why I did that and did not tie the swivel is because I want the line to be able to swivel back and forth and around. Very important. Now what a lot of people do is they tie an overhand knot here and here and then put a swivel in between it. Now that's okay, but eventually the swivel is going to jump across the knot. I don't know how it happens, but it does. So in order to keep that from happening, I put a stainless steel necklace spacer on both sides. Now it's impossible for the swivel to jump over this knot. And this system has worked for me. Um, it never gets tangled, it never gets fouled, and it's the perfect system. The next thing I have to show you is this hook right here. This is a 3 aught hook, it's a circle hook, and that hooks the fish in the corner of the mouth about 95% of the time for me. Now I don't tie a knot here. Okay, this is just an overhand knot that's acting as a stop knot. And the reason why I do that is because I want this hook to be able to swivel, but I don't want to tie a swivel. Okay, so the hook can swivel around the line as much as it wants to. The problem with tying a knot on this hook is that it gives the fish a chance to spin its way out. Sometimes if you tie a knot, you'll pull up your trot line and you'll see that you'll have a twisted up line like this with no bait and no fish. And what happens was you had a fish, but the fish spun its way out until the line got tangled and it was able to pop itself free. So that's how I solve that problem. Up next, we have the self-draining bucket that allows the rope to dry. It also allows me to get the rope wet, the twine wet, so that there's less chance of a tangle. If the rope is wet, it's more pliable and less likely to snag. So what I did is I cut the bottom of the bucket out and I replaced the bottom of the bucket with a milk crate. That's the plastic grating from a milk crate. It took some, some work to get this to fit right. There's no way to drill it and there's no way to glue it because this is polyethylene and this is polyethylene and you can't glue polyethylene to polyethylene. So I had to um, come up with a friction fit system. So in any case, this is a rope drying. Uh, a rope or a twine drying system and because of this I don't have a wet trot line that sits in the garage and rots. Last thing I want to show you in this video is the floats and weight systems that I use for the ends of the trot line. This is a PVC pipe with orange pool noodle on it and some nylon rope here. Now I made this to be adjustable. It has metal cleats that allow me to adjust the amount of line that I need 
for any given depth up to 30 feet. And I'm usually not in 30 feet. Okay? The line lays flat on the water like this. And if you get a bite, if you got a bunch of fish on the trot line, it usually gets pulled upright like this. Okay? Now this is a good float for areas that have uh, lots of boat traffic because propellers and you know props and, and, and lower units can hit this and it'll be fine. I mean, it might get damaged a little bit, but it doesn't matter because it's cheap, okay? Now in this state where I'm fishing today, you have to have your name and address on your gear. So I put a, um, a duct tape flag here and I'm going to write my name and address there. Okay, let me show you the cleats. Okay, so here are the cleats. They're just metal cleats. I couldn't find any stainless steel, so you can see that they're rusting, and they're screwed into the pipe. And that allows me to cleat the rope, and I can make adjustments and set these at the proper depth. Lastly, what I have here are homemade weights. These are lead weights. I melted some scrap lead and I poured it into a cast iron skillet. You can see the shape of the skillet right there. And these are about eight to 10 pounds. I think that's what I made them. And what I did is as the lead was solidifying, I pushed this stainless steel U-bolt in there. And when the lead hardened, then it captured the U-bolt. Okay. Now from there, I connect this brass clasp to the stainless steel U-bolt, okay? And that holds my floats. Now, I don't want this to be too heavy. If it's too heavy, when you go to lift it up, you're gonna pull the side of the boat down. And I think that's one way that you could fall out of the boat, get wrapped up in the line, and you would be done. So, <clears throat> I use these small weights, and they hold pretty well. They actually sink down into the mud, and it creates a little bit of like um, interference, like, like a suction effect, which gives it more holding power. But I definitely don't want to use a huge heavy weight. So lead, stainless steel, brass, nylon. So that's the end of this video. Next, we're gonna go out to the place where I fish and I'm gonna talk about how I ended up in the water and I could have drowned. Uh, part three would be actually using the trot line. So stay tuned, watch the second video. Thank you.